All right, Doug, so it wasn't all bad in 2023. And, uh, you know, every year you kind of like try to, at the end of the year, you like to tip your cap to some of the, you know, the um, the people who really laid online. Maybe some of the guys who kind of went under the radar by by other uh, onlookers, but you kind of, you noticed them. And we, we call these guys, where is it at? We call these guys Doug's Dudes, right? Doug's Dudes. One of, the, one of the greatest titles you can get as an A&T football player. And so now at this part of the show, we do want to turn our attention to our guy, Doug Brown. And he's going to present the 2023 team of his Doug's dudes. Go ahead, Doug. Tell, tell some guys, man. All right, man. We're going to get right into it, man. This, okay. this list of guys, I mean, these are not unfamiliar names. They're guys that we've been talking about all yeah. year long. Yeah, yeah. Um, Aggies, true and true, you know, these guys served us well. Um, we hate to see some of them go, uh, but we look forward to some of them returning. Um, but definitely for the 2023 season, we look, we would appreciate you guys' contribution. And uh, although it wasn't always pretty, these guys uh, proved to be Doug dudes by showing great effort, um, showing a great Aggie pride, and just uh, some in some cases, just being who they are, right? Right, right. So we'll start off um, – We'll start off with my boy, the Grave Digger, right? From 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 the jump, the Grave Digger was putting folks in the ground uh, early at UAB. Uh, kid who's tough as nails, quiet, unsung guy. Yeah, you know, he talked about being an unsung hero. Showed up this year with the new look, cut the locks off, um, and, and just like a totally different young man underneath the helmet. But went about Great. his business and really yeah. set the tone. And he uh, popped somebody. Back room. He popped somebody against Campbell. He had somebody else oh, walk up the field dizzy against Campbell on the last game. The guy has yeah. a whole highlight film just to lay yeah. guys down, you know, and put them to the ground. So, you know, <laughs> you know, the grave digger was attached to his last name. You know, the nickname had to do with his last name, but he's proved in, uh, with his play, you know, he's put some cats down. So, you know, he, physical runner, uh, but a great kid and does what he's supposed to do, uh, does what the coaches ask. And um, it's a great teammate from all my interactions with him. Uh, it was a wonderful kid. So definitely – you know, Mr. Gray, he's a Doug's dude. Um, I think you got to take a look at my boy, Amante. You know, we're still on the offensive side of the ball. Amante Jones, you know, really stepped up, had a good year, uh, really led the wide receiver room, right? Made some big catches for us. Um, you know, receiver is one of those positions where you're, you're totally dependent on the other uh, 10 guys doing their job just so that you can have a chance to get the ball. And then once the ball comes your way, you're expected to make some plays and you know, Amante, when he when he gets his hands on the ball and he gets an opportunity, uh, you can see his talent shine through. Um, you know, really makes a place for us in the spring. And then when he got that chance to get the ball this year, made some, some huge sp splash plays. And it's the second consecutive year that when we needed a spark, Amante provided that spark. You know, he did it two years ago against South Carolina State with the big punt return. They got called back. And then this year up at Norfolk, uh, when we were really looking for a spark in the, in the receiving game, uh, he came up with the big catch. Uh, over my you man's head moss. and double you got moss. You yeah. got moss, right? And, yeah. um, you know, just really lit a fi fire under our guys. And, you know, without those plays and some of his plays, maybe we don't have the one win that we do have this year. But, you know, he, he didn't stop. He made plays from the moment, um, from that moment on the rest of the year, um, even in the last game, you know, on that last drive of baby hook. And I love a receiver that makes all his quarterbacks better, right? He caught passes from everybody. Um, everybody. And, you know, it didn't affect him who was throwing the football. So, there are other times when, you know, you got, you're comfortable with this guy or that guy, but Monte did his best to make all of our guys um, hey, look special out there. Real quick, shout out to his mom and uh, aunt and all his family. That whole I crew, make, make. I got a chance to run to them at the end of the Campbell game. Uh, and they, man, they're awesome. Uh, all, all our football families are awesome. But I finally got a chance to, to meet them and, and, uh, she said, "Hey, Samaj." I was like, "Man, do I, you know who's this lady?" <laughs> class with her? And she was, she was just a fan. She, was, she, she just knew me from the show, and she just came up to me and said how much she, she enjoyed the program and all you guys. And and she said, "I said, so please tell me he's coming back." Because I was, you know, I'm, I'm worried at this point now. She said, "Yo, he, you know, he's we're coming back. He, you know, he, he loves it here." So I hope, yeah. I hope, <laughs> I'm gonna keep her uh, the, the word to it. But uh, yeah, yeah. Amari, and they've even put out, a, you know, they put something out. Yeah, he put out, man. man. Yeah, yeah, and I thought that's super cool in, in a moment yeah. where you know you have a lot of guys that are, are leaving, or there's yeah. this and that, and so much uh, negativity amongst you know what the roster looks like for for somebody to come out and purposefully 
you know, Same. make a comment yeah, and, and declare, yeah. I'm staying. Like, you I don't know, know what they're going, but I'm staying. <laughs> I'm not afraid of a rebuild, right? Yeah. You know, I heard yeah. some of the terminology, and there's some other kids and families that have gotten behind uh, Coach Brown and what we're doing. And, you know, I, that, that says a lot about um, their families as well, right? You know, kudos to those those kids. And, and definitely shout out to Monte Jones and his family, man. Uh, glad yeah. to have you. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm feeling this defensive side of the ball. Let's stay on. The, I mean, on uh, offensive side of the ball. Let's stay on the offensive side of the ball. Um, you know, we'll go up front for a minute. You know, I got to give a shout out to uh, Big Reek, Big Tyreek Stewart. Right? You know, how you how can you not be a Doug's dude and you missing a two for majority of the season? Right? I love you it. Know? I love it, man. We, yeah. we talked about the big old buddy from uh, the big left tackle from um, North Dakota State. North Dakota State that went on to play in the NFL and. And how that was part of his look, and I thought that added to his his value, you know, when he was getting recruited, and not recruited, when he was getting evaluated in the draft, and he ended up, you know, that, that's as soon as you see him on his profile pop up, you see that big smile with no teeth, and you know, I, it kind of makes me think about Tariq, but you know, Tariq's been all effort; he's been great since he's been here. You know, you know, you know what you're gonna get when you get Mr. Stewart. <laughs> it's gonna get, it's gonna get R-rated. Maybe X-rated sometimes when mm-hmm. he's out there on that field because he's gonna put it too. Uh, <laughs> that dude, that dude play front of him, the whistle and then some. So <laughs> nasty. And, nasty. and regardless nasty. of anything, when you turn on his film, you're gonna see that effort and you're gonna see how hard he played. Yeah. Um, a kid that another thing does not like to lose, man. To reap yeah. it means something. Not, to him. Uh, it, means yeah, so it, it definitely means something to him. Um, but another kid that's come from a, a an awesome uh, mom and uh has, has an awesome family his mom is has served as his mom and dad which he he's not shy to tell you um he speaks glowingly of his mother and i even had a chance to witness her in action you know she comes down at halftime and you know was there to meet him at, at the elon game and just give some encouraging words to her son because she knows her son is, and his abilities she knows his temperament and so to have an extra coach in the stands man my uh, shout out to Tariq's mom um but you know, he's a smart young man and he understands football and he was really uh, gracious and expressed gratitude to those guys that helped pave the way for him. He talks about all of his former O-line coaches and he talks glowingly about Coach Madison and how he helped shape them. And we know that coaches put a few guys in the league at offensive line. Uh, most recently, you know, his tackles, right? We had big Brandon Parker and then mm-hmm. Ricky Lee's down with the Panthers. So if you're Tariq Stewart, you got to feel good about um, the training and the coaching you receive from Coach Mattis. And, and I'm glad he was able to make a stop here and, and make a tremendous impact, right? And he's also a kid that shows a lot of Aggie pride when he's out in the Twitter sphere or out and about. He definitely reps a and And uh, he ain't going to let nobody talk, talk bad about him or his Aggie crew. So, you know, I appreciate Tariq, and I, and I appreciate uh, what he brought to our program. Uh, Tariq's definitely – that's my guy. That's Doug's dude right there. Yeah. All right. So I can't leave the offensive line uh, without talking about my boy, you know, Big Lawrence Legron. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Big Last, L himself, yeah. man. You yeah. know, of all the guys yeah. that I'm going to hate to see leave, you know, Big L, uh, he's a guy that, that I, I've told you, I think he's the epitome of what I want out of an offensive lineman, uh, yeah. especially here at a and yeah. one of the biggest compliments I can give him is that he has seemed to embrace the entire uh, college lifestyle. Um, and that he, he He's well-rounded and he participates in – uh, activities outside of just being uh, a football player. And he seems to get it. Like, Lawrence Legron seems to get it. I always say he's one of those guys that when you bring recruits in town, you know, you want to make sure they get a chance to meet Lawrence Legron and hang out and spend some time with such a seasoned vet um, because he is so well-rounded, right? And he gets it. And he's been there. And he can tell stories about the Celebration Bowl. He's played with some some of the former Aggie greats. And he's just a guy that gets it, right? He's going to be around. And he, he, he'll he be an anti-legend. I don't know if you guys had a chance to see him. One of the clips from the last Campbell game, but Lawrence pancakes this guy and he's laying on his back, right? And the guy's struggling to get up, but eventually he gets up while Lawrence's <laughs> legs are still laying on his back. And next thing you know, Lawrence <laughs> grown is doing a full out handstand at six foot, 300, whatever. What? He, he has the athleticism. He's doing pretty much a handstand. It's an awesome, it's an awesome uh, picture. It was an awesome play, but. I got to get that picture from LeGrow, man, and show it to you guys. You got to okay, repost it. Okay, I got to check that out. <laughs> oh, man. But it shows his athleticism. We know how strong he is, right? Yeah. But who knew that he it's had crazy. the ability yeah. to, uh, to um, get down like that and be, you know, support that weight um, vertically on his hands. So 
yeah. an impressive move. I, I told him that's something. I said that was one of the most impressive plays of the game. He definitely needs to add that to his highlight field. But you know, he gets it, man. I love a guy that gets it. Um, that is also instrumental in the development of the guys that come behind him, right? And I think Lawrence is that guy. Um, you know, we're gonna miss him, and hopefully, we can find some more Lawrence Legrones somewhere down in the state of Georgia, um, or along the recruiting trail. So, Lawrence, you my guy, man. We're gonna miss you. Uh, job well done, right? All right. Um, what y'all want? Y'all want some defense? I want some yeah, more. That's what right. yeah. I'm, I'm gonna give defense. you a defensive guy, you yeah. know, and and you you guys may or may not see this guy popping up on my Doug dudes list, but. I got to give it up to Varian Cole, man. Oh, yeah. He plays oh. defense the way that, you know, we like to see guys play defense. Now, that's, he got snubbed. That's he got snubbed from the CAA. He got snubbed. He, he got <laughs> snubbed, man. Yeah. He got snubbed. He definitely uh, had a year that was worthy of being on one of those um, all-conference teams, all-defensive teams. Um, but great effort. Flies around. When you go back and look at his highlight film, you're going to see him uh, making an exception, uh, recovering fumbles, laying big hits down. Spiking the football with the middle field, <laughs> you know, just, he's everywhere, right? <laughs> he's everywhere. You gonna think it's two of them out there, but um, no, definitely plays the game the right way, and you know, he's kind of a mirror of, of what we expect from the system. The last defensive system we saw, and flying around in that aggressiveness um, under Coach Washington, you know, with some of those uh, linebackers and safeties, and then you know, he's also um, taking advantage of his of the scheme he's in this year, and, and Coach Brown and those guys and Coach Z putting him in position to make plays, right? And I think he got better as the year went on, and I think he got more discipline as the year went on. And that's, you know, all you hope to see. Um, football's an emotional game, and he plays with a lot of emotion. And you definitely don't want to pipe any of that down. You definitely want him to be able to harness that gotta and continue it. to make plays. And and I think he's one of those guys you're going to see who's fueled by that snub, right? He's going to be fueled by that. He'll go, right. he's gonna work uh, good point, harder. good point. So, so he got even more ammunition next year. Yeah, yeah he, I mean, he, he's going to continue to grow. He's going to work hard in the weight room. Um, and I think he's going to be one of those guys that, you know, you look up, he's been here three or four, three years, I think now. And, hey, and hey, like who, who, just, told, this who was here. the first person to tell us about him? Who was the first person to tell us about Cole? It wasn't one of the Headless Horsemen? What? Headless Horsemen mentioned him. Um, Craig, 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 yeah, Craig, yeah, Craig, yeah, Craig was the first one. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I started to watch him uh, when he was in high school because I've got a buddy that is real close, mm -hmm. close with his coaching staff. Okay. And, you know, we talked about him and I think Spindle came down together, but he's playing the way that he pretty much played in high school, which, you know, yeah. sometimes it takes a while to adjust to the physicality of like college football. But he's been physical from the jump. Right. So, you know, he's continuing to improve his coverage skills and I'm pretty sure he led us in turnovers this year um, <laughs> with a couple of interceptions and a fumble recovery. So, you know, I think when we talk about being in place, being around the football uh, like he was against Rhode Island. That's what we mean. You know, we need you get all 11 halves to the ball and you're hustling. Good things will happen for you and the football will find its way to you. But uh, Varian Cole, I think he sets the standard. Um, you know, I think he did a good job of playing in different spaces. There were games where he was down in the box. There were games where we put him back on the hash. So, you know, I think he, his versatility uh, should be key for us going forward. And, and we hope to see him here and continue to improve. But shout out to Varian Cole um, and his contributions on, on this past season. No. So all right, yeah. Well, I got to I got to give a shout out to my boy Ty Williams. You know, he was able to play throughout oh. the season. Um, you know, one of the biggest reasons why Ty's on my list is because of his leadership, right? You know, he's, he's he seems yeah. to be a, he's somewhat of a quiet guy, but I saw him become a lot more vocal this year. Um, and I saw when things didn't go right, how disappointed he was and how much he wanted to get get it right. You know, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. But you know, he was kind of you know, unsung hero back there, kind of a quarterback, solid tackler, um, played in all 11 games, right? It, it, it's pretty hard to be durable enough to play, you know, in a position where, let's face it, you're probably having to tackle a lot more than what we would like to see you tackle. We'd like to see you covering more, but he had to come down and make not only, um, you know, touchdown saving tackles, but just tackles when we needed um, to, to keep the chains from moving, right? He's been out there. And um, I, I, he's one of the kids that I've seen his leadership and hear him. And he's even expressed um, at times, that, hey, we're going to get it right, right? And I love to hear a guy that, that, that's aware enough to know that it matters not only to him, but it matters to you too. And he did not want to disappoint us as fans, as, as um, Blue Death Media folk. You know, like Ty gets it. 
And um, his leadership. He has, he has pretty good size, but he's, he's like, what, 6'1"? Is he 6'1"? Six six yeah, one? Uh, he's 6'1", and, he, and he's one of those guys yeah. we we're super excited about what he got here, right? He was, yeah, yeah. you know, he's put on a little bit of size. He's a slim, slender guy uh, by nature, um, but he's worked really hard. And, and it, when, you, when you get a chance to meet him and talk to him, I mean, you, you can see how special um, of a young man he is as well. But, you know, Ty, shout out to Ty. He's my guy, man, and, you know, keep okay. working hard. And, and when I spoke to him and, and he mentioned, hey, we're going to get it right, you know, I tell him, just do you, man. Keep working hard and because that's what it's all about, you know, those kids' experience yeah. and in real time. So he, He's straight out of Detroit, so he liked that toughness. That, that, uh, straight out of D, man. Yeah, that's yeah, him. Yeah. Um, you know, next up, stay on the defensive side of the ball, and uh, these guys kind of go hand in hand. They were pretty much, um, you know, the standouts on our defense along with Avarion Cole. Um, but to me, they stood out not only because of their ability, but their consistency, with, you know, when they were out there. Um, you know, one of them's – you got to start with my man KP, Ron Prunty. Of course, um, of course. We talked about Prunty and, and him being um, as solid as they come is what I like to say, Craig. You know, he has all the measurables. He's got the fundamentals. Um, mm -hmm. We asked him to do a tremendous amount early oh, in the season. He was like, where's ball lined, all over the field? Yeah. He, yeah. Oh, man, he was at corner. He lined up in safety. He was yeah. in, um, hey, down hey, in the hey, box. Doug, he blitzed Doug, at times. Doug, I, I kind of like him in center field, too. I like him in center oh, field. Oh, I do. I man, like him in center field, yeah. What I like about him is that, you know, he was willing to take on those challenges, yeah. right? You know, yeah. you could be a prima donna corner and say, you know, I'm going to stand out here on my island. You know, he I ain't interested nickel. in coming out there and mix it up. Played nickel, blitz, play you know, and, and yeah. he, he was excited about the fact that he almost got a sack one game blitzing off the edge, and then the next game he went out and got that sack. Yeah, so got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great for his film. I think it's awesome that our coaching staff put him in that position where he could show that on his film, right? It's one thing to be like, we got a kid and he's talented, but to put him in position where he could make plays so that, you know, for a kid who has aspirations to play on Sundays, he's got a complete film that shows him – all over the field, right? And this is just in a short sample size of this year. Now, he did a little bit last year. Uh, we put him in the box in the, um, and we put him in the middle of the field in the celebration, not the celebration, but the Ag Eagle Classic in Charlotte um, to start. But for the most part after that, he was back on the corner. Um, yeah. But they did a great job of using, utilizing his talent so teams couldn't just game plan and stay away from him, right? If you don't know where he is, you know, he's got a greater chance of impacting uh, what you're doing on offense. So, Example, the sack he made, um, blitzing off the edge. So we didn't just put him out there. We utilized his talent. Uh, we were able to, you know, put him on the the, the offensive toughest matchup at times. Like we did that at uh, Norfolk. We did that at Delaware. Yeah. And he stepped up to the challenge, right? And, you know, if you play the game long enough, you're going to get beat. Like that's nothing new. You're going to, you know, you have a short memory. take a big a hit and, and have yeah. to step up or have a moment that's not comfortable or desirable for you. But – you know, he just went about his business. He's not a overly uh, loud guy or brash guy. Just yeah. played ball, did his job, and um, was solid, as solid and consistent as you as they come. In in a in a sense, when he he really didn't have as much consistency after Aaron Harris went down, right? You know, you kind of it's one thing if you got some bookends and another court over there to kind of help balance things out. When it's just you, you know, you're expected right. to make all the plays when they come yeah. your way, right? Yeah. <laughs> You got to be ready when they come your way. If you get one or two targets a game or three targets, but whenever they come your way, you better make your play, right? That's just kind of how it is. So, And he was ready. You know, he was ready when that time comes. So KP's a super talented guy. I mean, we're blessed to have him. You know, I wish we had KP's falling out the trees. We don't, right? They're not everywhere. You know, you don't find 6'2 guys, 6'2 and a half guys that are long, rangy, can run, and have the, the skill set. I think if you watch his – his film, you'll see just how skilled he is, right? That's the new, the so nuances yeah. of playing cornerback. You know, he's got, and he's learning, he's getting better. Um, and he still has a lot of football ahead of him, right? You know, I think he's, his best he football he, still yet to come. We got, we got more, two more years, right? I believe one. so. Um, I mean, it, well, maybe it is one. He's all his years um, transitioned over because he's, you know, he's transferred technically twice twice right so he left Kansas, uh, Kansas and, south and went to south carolina and south carolina yeah. the ante yeah. so you know we'll some of that gets funny and i don't know you know oh, we'll they still have they'll yeah. have some some choices to make um at some point you know if he keeps playing football the way he's playing so excited for him uh next two we got two more guys on our list okay. man, that we're gonna highlight tonight and again we'll have a show where we probably we'll probably have more opportunities to talk about our roster and 
in a greater depth, even though that's kind of a play on words. We don't have a lot of a lot of depth right now. <laughs> I, see, I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah, you know, but we'll we'll probably have a, I, I hope to have a chance to talk about our guys and then talk about the guys that end up leaving before and, and give them some flowers too um, before we move on to the next uh, to, to our future. But um, I we could not have a Doug's Dudes list without naming the guy who made the most Doug's Dudes plays when he was out there, and that. That has to go to my man, B.J. Turner, right? You know, anytime you have a game with 20 tackles, and I think that was kind of our highlight, standout defensive play uh, performance of the year, right? That really, you know, let people know, hey, A.T.'s here to play defense, and they've got some kids that can get it done. Um, you know, B.J. was a blessing to have, and Coach highlighted that, you well, know, well. in his comments. He was a blessing to have and be a part of our team. Um, you know, he was right on time, and, you need you know, them. for him to step in and do what he did. We needed him. We needed him, you know, and, you know, that was one of our areas that we thought we were thin at, you know, immediately. And he saw an opportunity, stepped in and became an immediate leader and, and led by example, right? You want a guy that can go out there and get it done. And, and I think it wasn't too far. It was the first game. We looked at the first game against UAB and we're like, his speed is different. <laughs> like, yeah. he's playing faster. He flashed immediately. He ball. flashed immediately. 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 And yeah. so – we 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 went ahead and said not too long after that, hey, we gotta get everybody playing up to speed with hey, him. Hey, right? hey, you know what? You know what, Dougie? I think we we could and Craig, you know, you you were predicting that we could, you know, get us a win um down the stretch. I think we could have stolen another one if he was healthy and he was in that middle. I think Yeah, I, I agree. I, I agree. I think, think we could one a def, one, possibly two, two more wins. Well, yeah, I would say two more games. We could have we could have easily won two more games with him in the lineup. Yeah, but so, you know, you know, that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. Yeah, we we were we looked a lot different when he wasn't out there, right? And unfortunately, yeah, we weren't yeah, able to, to finish with him. Um, and those, you know, we had some holes on defense, and it was hey, it was cool talking to his dad, though. It was cool talking to his dad. Man, and I'm glad that they that he had to, he got to have that moment, right? And you know, look, those guys deserved that. Um, but awesome kid, awesome family. Um, you know, I'm glad that they were able to add to their family's legacy. And, and have a chance to watch BJ because we enjoyed it, man. And he was a playmaker out there, and he kind of set the standard as to what we expect from a linebacker out of Coach Brown's defense going forward. Like, you, yeah. you we're looking for you to meet the BJ Turner uh, a level, you know, in terms of flying around. We know what, you know, talent can look like in our scheme, right? Yeah. If we have some kids that can run and hit and, and be where they're supposed to be and, yeah. and get the job done. Smart, and too. Is smart. This, you know, very smart. Yeah. And there's opportunity to shine within our scheme and he, and he took full advantage of that man and, and good i mean he, he deserved everything that he got this year so of course we could have had him for more games uh being that you know it was a kind of a one-shot deal um i would have loved for him to you know, know. go out and it was, it was, it was, a short, it was like a short-term rental but i wish we could you know lease to own you know <laughs> yeah yep. yeah so, so who, who's yep. your last guy is your last guy what i think it is your last guy my last guy is exactly who you think it is uh, he's the guy that um when things were going bad, bad, when we couldn't muster up an offensive first down, uh, we couldn't muster up a score, we couldn't muster up a, a co completed pass. <clears throat> this guy literally kept us in games. Yeah, he did it on a unit that you typically wouldn't expect your most production to come from. I think there was a point in the year when uh, he led us in touchdowns, right? And had and th and those weren't offensive touchdowns. Like, but first half of the season, <laughs> yeah, yeah, first half of the season. But we know, it, and we at one point we even said we don't care how we get it done. We just want to get in the end zone and score and have a, have a chance to be in the game. And he found another way to score, right? <laughs> he, he he caught actually caught our first touchdown pass of the season. Uh, this guy is none other than um, let me get it right. Tayman Cook, because I call him Tayman just because I like to say Tayman. I just roll yeah. off again. Go, go yeah. Tayman, you know, I'm, I'm out there hollering. <laughs> um, but Tayman Cook, um, Tayman phenomenal, Cook. phenomenal uh, kick returner for us this year, man. Uh, and this this was a guy who decided to come back after a stellar season last year, you know, and Tayman was easily our special teams player of the year, right? No. But to come back this year and to put forth the effort that he's had, um, and we know the kickoff kickoff return, uh, it's a unit thing, right? You need guys to get it done for you. Well, sometimes your speed gets it done for the guys, right? Because right. his speed was the difference uh, in those returns, right? We saw him break tackles. 
We saw him outrun angles. We saw him make the last guy miss. Um, but as big as those return turns were, it, it's the moment that he did them in. It's when we needed the most, right? So I'm glad that he was able to have those returns. I'm surprised that teams were still kicking it to him midway through the season because I thought at that point I would already make game plan out to kick it to him. Yeah, you know, guys, and, we, we got some guys. Hey, it was funny because against Campbell they would they would do it on the pooch kick, and then I guess it was already determined that whoever called it was still going to toss it back. We we're going to toss it back to him. Take my um. That that uh t- taming that last uh, uh uh touchdown so he could tie Malik Wilson he, he finished one short but Doug before you do that go ahead and give me the Jamaican uh uh air horn uh, we need, we need burr, burr, burr. Right. so so that that caps off your 2023 Doug's dudes list but Taymon Cook also is officially the Blue Death Valley.com 2023 Player of the Year and we got some highlights that's a Step back and remember his greatness. Jamon Cook grabs this one at the 20. He's got some space down the sideline. Cook to the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, and into the end zone. He can take it all the way to the house. Barely touched there as he crosses the 50. And he's he pressed that, that go button, that X button, where you just keep pressing it. On PlayStation, on the PS5, if you can afford it, but I digress. Cook all the way to the crib, house call for North Carolina Antique. Back deep. Number 18. Tamon Cook Tamon. will return this one from round the five. He's got a hole down the sideline. And that's pretty impressive right there because sometimes, you know, you got guys don't trust their speed and they like to cut back. But he he just said, I'm staying on my line and you ain't catching up to me. And he just he did that dude had he that guy had the angle initially, but it didn't it didn't last long. Cook! Can he beat the kicker? He can and he's in for six. Setting up the blocks. Cook using that speed, getting to the sideline. And winning the foot race all the way to the end zone. Owen Daffer will come on for the extra point. Or anything like that. It's a lot of time left, but you have to start playing better football. Like you say, Doug, these all came in big time. We're down 17 to nothing here against Richmond. Offense is doing nothing, going nowhere, and we need a spark. And he's like, well, y'all can't throw it to me. I'll, I'll find some way to get in the box. Cook fields this one just inside the 10. Changes field. Tamon Cook. Has some room. He's across midfield and is going to take it to the house again. Tamon Cook, 92 yards for his third kickoff return for a touchdown of the season. To set things up, his stop and go, you see he catches it just inside the 10-yard line and doesn't really turn it on until he sees that green grass and he hits that seam. And that's murder she wrote. You're not going to catch Tamon Cook in the open field and if there's a silver lining offensively special teams in this season so far for the aggies it's Tamon Cook. And like you say dougie he just didn't do it as a kick returns he also was an impact on, on the offense wide receiver was just wiggling all right jet sweep coming to the outside one man blocks two this is ahmad ross to the house touchdown a team that doesn't score scores T a little unpredictable right now on offense Brickhouse sends away and this is this is actually on uh, as a gunner on, on, on kick kick coverage so he's also playing on the defensive side special team nice kick Pringle is met immediately and brought down with the beanbag coming out at the 43 yard line Excuse me, at the 38 yard line. Well, that's what I got. Hopefully, it wasn't too blurry for you guys, but that was. Uh, and, that now, was how good. reminiscent of, of that play was it, that, you know, from the Elon game when he came down and yeah. hit the guy and got tossed out the game? I know. Oh, that hurt us. That, 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 yeah. that could have been a different game if he was still there. Man, look, that, that definitely mm-hmm. hurt us that game. Um, but yeah, Tamar, keep, up, keep that up, man. That'll get you playing on Sundays. Bill Belichick, if you're listening, Tamon is here in Greensboro. He covers kicks. He returns kicks. That's at, at, like a little um, 
Slater, just like a little Slater. We need 